Welcome to our first episode of Pharaoh Functions, where we give you a behind-the-scenes glimpse of what it takes to keep Pharaoh functioning. Of course, there are a lot of parts to Pharaoh's operation, and in this video, we are going to show you the first steps to water flow, that is, getting seawater into Pharaoh. This is essential for keeping our marine critters happy and healthy. Feral Marine Life Center is pretty lucky. We have a great location. Being at the base of City Pier, we are in close proximity to seawater, which gives us easy access. The easy access allows us to have what is called an open flow system. Basically, we're able to pump the water in, push it through our exhibits, and allow it to drain back to its source. Essentially, the water that's in our exhibits is the same as the water that is out here. You can kind of think of us as an extension of the Strait of Juan de Fuca and the Port Angeles Harbor. There are a lot of perks to having an open flow system, though it does have a few drawbacks, and the main one being it's a lot of maintenance. But luckily we have a great group of volunteers that doesn't mind helping us out with the dirty work. The maintenance starts here at City Pier. It is actually underneath this pier that has our pump platform. And the pump platform is home to the pump, which of course does all the heavy lifting. Believe it or not, this is actually how that pump started out looking like. We use a centrifugal pump, which basically has an impeller that spins that helps push or pull the water. The pump is powered by a single phase 240 volt 3 horsepower motor and has a RPM of 3450. Since the motor and the pump are connected via a direct drive, this means that our pump also has an RPM, that is a rotation per minute, of 3450. So there's 3450 rotations per minute, giving the pump power to pull the water up from about 10 to 20 feet below the water surface. The actual distance uh, is dependent on whether or not it is high tide or low tide. And then of course the pump has to pull the water above the surf water surface another 10 to 20 feet. Again, dependent on whether it is a high tide or low tide. The three inch diameter hose that the water is being pulled up from is the part that requires the most cleaning. In fact, frequent cleaning. This requires us to disconnect the hose from the pump and physically pull it up to the pier. The reason for the cleaning is because both the inside and the outside of the hose frequently gets covered in biofouling. The biofoul is caused by settled barnacles, mussels, encrusting sponges, and of course, clogs from algae. The end of the three inch hose line has an end cap, and there's a couple of variations of the end caps that are used. The end cap on the left here is our traditional one with the quarter inch holes, but unfortunately it does have a tendency to clog, especially in the spring. So we've been testing some different designs and have come up with the one on the right. It still uses quarter inch holes, uh, but since the surface area is a bit more broad, we are able to use a sturdy, screen to help prevent clogging. Both end caps uses a check valve to prevent the water from draining. From the pump, the water is pushed through more hose line and PVC. This section, we actually use a duplicate system. You can see the duplicate system with the two parallel PVC pipes uh, that are running along the bottom of the pier, just slightly right to the center of the image. This duplicate system helps minimize the cleaning maintenance needed, which is really helpful as the PVC length is actually approximately 270 feet from the pump to the building. We are also able to utilize the duplicate system for when we are done with the cleaning of the main hose line. It allows us to flush the line, sending water to and from with the duplicate system, preventing it from going actually up into the building and into the exhibits. 
Thanks for watching and we look forward to showing you water flow part two. What happens when the water enters the building?